is up y'all welcome back to another video and in today's video we're talking about another detroit lions offseason edition and today we're talking about desmond trufant the quarterback the lions signed this offseason to a two-year 21 million dollar deal from the atlanta falcons now you guys said your favorite videos were the film break well not all of you said that but a lot of you said you guys loved the film videos so i'm hitting you guys with another one now the undrafted free agent videos are really fun because i don't know a lot about the players a lot of you guys don't either so it's really cool However, I'm really running out of players to do in that, you know, kind of aspect because we've done pretty much all of the undrafted free agent videos that we could do a video on, aside from like a fullback and a long snapper. So I don't necessarily know if y'all want that video. I don't know if I want to do that video. Like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie. Like the fullback, maybe the long snapper, probably not. I'm just, I'm just going to leave it there, but maybe we do it. I don't know. Anyways, I wanted to go look at back and see what free agents we've done a video on. I don't think I've done one on Desmond Trufant. I also could do one specifically on Danny Shellen and Jamie Collins. We'll see. But today we're looking at Desmond Trufant. And this signing, I feel like it was a big signing, but it kind of went on the radar because right after we signed him, we traded away Darius Slay. And that was kind of like the main focus was, oh, Slay's gone. But it really, really is no talk about Desmond Trufant. We haven't talked about him a ton either. So I want to do a full video on him and look at his good and his bad. Okay, what he does well and what he doesn't do well. I think that's really important because there's a reason he's a free agent, right? He's not going to be perfect. If he was perfect, we probably would have had no way to sign him, right? He wouldn't have been available for the Lions to go out and sign this offseason. So we're looking at the good and the bad. My Madden video is going to be coming. However, it's not here yet because uh, my face cam didn't save. I don't, I don't know why. So uh, it's just the gameplay. So I'm thinking I'm gonna like voice over it or maybe like react to it, even though I've already played the game. I don't know what we're gonna do with that. I, I don't know. I'm still trying to decide. However, that video is almost done. It's just not done because I don't have the. The, the face recording and I can't play the game again so we're kind of stuck here so I'm not sure what to do with that but anyways let's hop right into this video let's look at the good and bad that I took away from Desmond Trufant so the first player you're going to see here is uh not necessarily a good not necessarily a bad either uh it's, it's his run support so we'll see a couple of plays of this in this video I watched about three to four games I think somewhere in that range the first half versus the Colts um by the way not a lot of people targeted him I'll get to that in a second but this is like a run defense play, and what you're going to see from Desmond Trufant is he's not a big run support tackler. Like, he's not a cornerback that's known for going up making tackles. I don't think he's the type of hitter that Jeffrey Okuda is going to be in the league. I don't think Okuda is, like, the biggest hitter, but he's, he's pretty good at it. I don't necessarily think Desmond Trufant is. Like, he can get by. I think that's kind of where he's at. That's the level he's at of tackling is I can get by, right? I'm not going to run someone over, but I can do just enough where I'm not a liability in the run game. See, he's not a big hitter. He usually focuses on trying to get the run back to the inside by just sitting on the edge and kind of making him go back to the inside without even having to make a play. And that's kind of what you're going to see here. So this one, I just thought it'd be an easy way to pop it off. A little bobble there. Is that Miles Sanders? Okay, so then he just kind of hops back in. Doesn't make the tackle, he just forced him back to the inside. Makes sense. He's only six foot one ninety, which by the way, is the same size that, that Darius Lay is. So I don't know. That's just interesting to me. Okay, so let's pop back into two, another one here. Now, what's interesting is that he usually follows around the best wide receiver. And I think someone asked me a question on one of my videos earlier on the Lions Mailbox, and they're like, hey, do you think, you know, this guy can move this slot or whatnot? And I really didn't say that Trufant could. I didn't necessarily think he could. And while I don't think he's the best at it, he does follow around the best wide receiver with Atlanta, no matter where he would go. If that's on the outside or the slot position, he would follow that wide receiver around. Here, you're going to see him in the inside here of these three wide receivers. He follows that receiver around wherever he goes. So he does play in the slot. So that's pretty cool. It's kind of cool that he's able to play in those positions all right he's a veteran in this league but he's still able to play in those positions so that's really really cool so here you're going to see him in a slot and this is where you're going to see some closing speed while i don't think he's a four eight four three eight speed that he was coming out of college in 2013 from washington i still don't think he's necessarily slow and he when he talked with the detroit lions he said he feels good you know he still thinks he's faster but when you watch him i don't think he looks super quick However, he's not slow and he has really good anticipation, all right? This is what comes with being a veteran, playing in the league a long time is you get to learn a lot of things. You're not necessarily the most athletic you've been, but you're way smarter, you're more intelligent, you know what's gonna happen. And this is where you can anticipate and jump on a ball. So watch this play here. Um, he's probably not the fastest he's ever been. I have the speed slowed down a little bit just so it's easier. So you're gonna see him over here, kind of in a slot here. So it's a quick little hour, oh, boom, right here. So you can see this about what, five yards, five yards apart. The ball's already in the air, but we're gonna see his anticipation because of the out route to jump on the pass. And you can see he jumps down and makes a play on the ball. He's able to make it incomplete. Probably not the best pass by Carson Wentz, but you can see him jump down on the play. Uh, the sideline for the Atlanta Falcons was hype. It's the quality all the way. I got the quality all the way up, man. I don't know what's going on here. Maybe it's because it slowed down. I don't know. Anyways, you're going to see it again here. So he just jumps on that route. That's really cool. Anticipation, big things there. That's what you see from a lot of older players. Kind of like Everson Griffin.
Griffin, right? He's not the most athletic he's been, but he's got that. He's like a te technician, right? Makes a lot of different moves, spin moves, all this different stuff. That's kind of what you see with some older uh, cornerbacks as well. And I think that's why a lot of times they have success moving to safety position because they're still smart. Their anticipation is really good. They just have lost a little bit of a step. But I don't think that's where Trufant is super slow. Like, I don't know if he's necessarily as fast as he was coming out of college, but he's still got something. And he shows that, like, he'll press up. He's not afraid to get up on a wide receiver. It really depends on which wide receiver he's going against. Um, but he does press up and he's not afraid to do that. So here you're going to see a deep pass um, that uh, he's going against here. I think this one is the interception by Desmond Trufant. So you can see him pressed up on the bottom of the screen here. I, who is 19? I don't even know who 19 is. Is that Art? I say go away. So I don't know who 19 is. But anyways, you can see some pressure. Carson Wentz escapes it. Not a great decision to throw this one deep because he underthrew it. If he maybe throws it deep, but he was on him. I mean, he's pretty much locked on him. There's not a lot of uh, space here for him to throw this ball. I mean, he's stride for stride with him. So that's good coverage. And then you can see he's underthrown. So he's got the inside leverage. He's able to go and make a play on the ball. That's good man-to-man -man defense. And that's that's one thing I love is I think this guy is a beautiful scheme fit. Like he's going to hop right in the scheme and he's going to be perfect for the Lions, right? Perfect. I mean, I don't think necessarily Darius Slay, like he didn't want to be here. I think he would have been fine in this scheme. But this dude, it, he's just going to gel right in. He's going to gel right in. We'll get to more of that in a second. But there's an interception by Desmond Trufant, one of the four he had on the season. Look at that. I gave a fan a ball. Babe, that could, that could be you. That could be you. So you never know. You can see some zone awareness. Now, like I said, he's a very good at anticipating. He's very aware. He's older, so he's great at that thing. And what you're going to see here is they play a lot of man-to-man -man with Atlanta. But one thing they do mix in at time to time is zone defense, like the Detroit Lions do. Matt Patricia plays the most man in the league. However, he does mix in zone here and there just to keep the offense guessing, you know, kind of disguise a zone as man-to-man -man defense. So right here, what you're going to see is he'll kind of break off his route and jump down to the tight end here. So he's going to take off to Ertz, jump down on the play, make another good play on the ball, knock it away and complete. Not a, I don't know necessarily if that's not a great throw because he kind of had a throw behind him because of safety, but you can see Desmond Trufant is over there. So the ability to drop back in the zone and kind of mix up different coverages is big and he seems very comfortable with that. So, so again, I think he's just going to be a beautiful scheme fit for the Detroit Lions. And that's one thing that was big with Slay. You know, a lot of his interceptions came off of anticipation like that. Like Darius Slay would see a pass and he'd just jump on it. He'd break on the ball and take the risk. And a lot of times it would work out for him. And that's where you saw a lot of big interceptions and some huge, huge momentum changers. So here's another deep ball. This one by Carson Wentz once again. You can see it's pretty good defense. Like, I mean, it's probably not the fastest wide receiver, but it's pretty good defense. His throw goes out of bounds. So we'll skip that one. We don't need to see it twice. It is against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And this is Jameis Winston at quarterback. He's going to throw like a post route here. And what I see is Desmond Trufant's really good against a deep ball. Like against a deep ball, Desmond Trufant has a lot of success. Now you go underneath routes, short routes. That's where he struggles. And you'll see that in a second. But this, a deep post over the middle, just the awareness, right? He just, he's basically playing wide receiver. One, I don't know what the heck Jameis Winston is looking at here, why he threw this ball. I don't know. I mean, he doesn't even have that much pressure. And two, Mike Evans, the dude's walking. I mean, he's literally behind the wide receiver, makes no effort on the ball. But either way, Desmond Trufant's able to just play wide receiver, jump in front of it, and take it. And it's just an interception. Easy. Easy play for Desmond Trufant there. Bad play by the offense completely. I mean, the wide receiver and the quarterback, I have no idea what they were doing. But you can see Desmond Trufant. Here's another angle of it. I'll give you guys another one because the first clip was kind of short. I'm not sure why I made that one so short. But you can see there's like no pressure whatsoever. Winston kind of just goes right to it. And he's probably expecting Mike Evans to make a play on the ball. But no, he's, he's basically playing defense and Trufant's playing offense. So he makes an interception there. That's the second of his four interceptions. So nice play there. Uh, what else have we got here? Okay, so we're back with the Tampa Bay game. All right, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, this was one of his better games. I would say he didn't do too bad in this game. Um, here's one where I would say this is back to the tackling. Like I showed you guys earlier, he's not a very big tackler. And what you're going to see here is he just does enough. This is something I saw a lot with Greedy Williams when I was watching him out of LSU. Go for the leg, man. Just grab that leg and hang look at him. He's just hanging on to it. He, He's hanging on to wait for someone to get there. That's okay. I mean, it works. It's not the most beautiful. It's not the best. And sometimes it's not perfect. But as long as you get him down, I guess. Now, this is who took advantage of Desmond Trufant. And as I was watching, when I say he wasn't targeted a lot, he didn't look like they ever threw it to him. I mean, literally, I watched the Colts' entire first half, and I don't know if they threw the ball at him once. And I was like, this can't be right. There's, they're definitely throwing it to him. What am I missing here? So I went back and looked at the targets. He had 38 targets in nine games. That's not a lot. And the reason I say that is because if you multiply, you know, that by two, which would be 76, because that's 16 games. However, that's two extra games. You could take a couple away. Maybe just to say, for example, 70 targets on the season. Darius Slay last season was targeted 93 times. Desmond Trufant 2018 was targeted 98 times. So that's a lot. That's not a lot of targets. I don't know what it was. Either way, he just wasn't targeted a lot. However, this is where I saw him get beat. And I think this is where some of that short 
short range, you know, athleticism, quickness. This is where that comes into play when you play man to man. You play man to man a lot, you need to be athletic. You have to be. And that's because of this part of the game. See, he's good deep ball because he has awareness, anticipation, and this is why some cornerbacks can move to safety. However, this is where he gets beat. And honestly, this is where a lot of cornerbacks get beat man to man because it's really hard to cover inside routes in man to man defense. You really just can't. You can't. I mean, it's just so such a big advantage, and you see that all the time. If you're a Michigan football fan, you know exactly what I'm talking about with that. So, yeah, I mean, you can see here he's about to get beat over the middle. Now, one thing I do want to say is one thing that the Lions do a little bit differently than a lot of other teams, because we know the Lions don't blitz a lot. They blitz less um, than the uh, Falcons did. The Falcons last year blitz 24.5% of the time. We blitz 18 Lions, a lot of times, will just have their linebackers kind of just sit over the middle. Five yards back, kind of like a spy on the quarterback, but also reading the quarterback's eyes. So for these short underneath routes, that's where you can see some success, right? That's where you can see the linebackers kind of get in the way and kind of blur the vision of quarterbacks. But here, you know, there's no one really in his way. And uh, it's kind of a pass. This is a nice pass. This is about 10-yard in route. And uh, again, in the inside, he wasn't able to break on it. Michael Thomas, great wide receiver, and he beats him to the inside. That's really where his biggest concern is. His biggest concern is over the middle, but I think the Lions, with their linebackers dropping back, that's going to be big because he can cover everywhere else. He can cover on the outside. He can cover deep passes. It's inside. It's quick stuff. Inside routes, slants, whatever maybe. That's where he struggles. I would say within 10 yards is probably the worst place that you would put him here. So you can see, once again, here a quick little slant route. It's just really a car. It's not a big gain he's giving up. It's just really tough to cover for any player in man-to-man -man defense. With the linebackers kind of dropping back like they do, when you have two linebackers sitting over the middle, that's when I can see, you know, that being tougher to complete. Uh, here again, a short route. That's my true find, you know, kind of, it's all short stuff. It's short stuff. But you get him on a deep pass, he's going to be really successful. So it's really going to be hard to take shots against true find. Not a lot of quarterbacks tested too often. Here's a good play because you can see they kind of ran a little trick here. So they had just Taysom Hill was the only wide receiver out here. And when they handed it off, they had Taysom Hill come around and uh, maybe you think he's running it. Well, Desmond Trufant's out there one-on-one. -on -one. And that's one thing that's cool, is he is their number one corner. He'll follow around the best wide receiver, and if there's one corner on the field, it's gonna be him. So that's really nice to see that you got a great corner that takes the best challenge week in and week out. Here you can see on the right, one wide receiver on the field. Good coverage by Trufant, nowhere to go, kind of just throws it out of bounds. So with that good coverage, it's forced an incomplete pass. So overall, man, Trufant, he's a good cornerback. And I think that people are saying he's washed up is ridiculous. I think it's just over the middle, underneath route, stuff that's going to beat him, crossing routes. That's a killer in man-to-man, -man, but it is versus pretty much all cornerbacks. That's where you give up a lot of routes, short routes. And I think, again, with our linebackers that drop back where it's like, oh, my gosh, they're in no man's land, that's where that could actually be beneficial. And that could force a lot of uh, over-the-top routes, outside routes. And I think that's where Devin, Desmond Trufant is going to fit in. Obviously, it's a huge addition that he probably wants to play here, which is way, way better than what we had with Darius Slay. And I think he's just a beautiful scheme fit. I mean, this is that guy. He plays man-to-man -man consistently, and then all of a sudden, he'll drop in his zone, and he has good awareness. He's just a smart player. And this is the kind of players that you want to have and help a guy like Imani, like Okuda, those kind of players. So I think overall, this is a really good signing for the Lions. For two years, $20 million. The secondary got a huge upgrade here. And uh, while I don't know if he's necessarily on Darius Slay's level, he's definitely an improvement from Rashawn Melvin, and I think he's going to be very, very beneficial. Keep in mind, his numbers were better than Rashawn Melvin, and he was also playing against the best wide receivers week in and week out. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, well, Atlanta probably just gets a lot more pressure. However, they actually got less pressure than the Detroit Lions did, which is insane. They had less pressure last season than the Lions did. I believe they were last in the league in getting pressure on the quarterback, and they blitzed more. So he was having no benefits in the back end by, by players getting to the quarterback. So I think he's going to be perfect. And uh, yeah, I love this move by the Lions. That's Desmond Trufant. Let me know your thoughts, comments below. Thank you for watching, and I'm out.